for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. sit with my best friend tony what's up buddy what's happening brother nothing we kind of have an old friend on the podcast today that i'm pretty excited about yeah yeah uh you know we we, we talked about these guys all the time or uh-huh. we talk about the product all the time and uh, i know it's one of your favorites for your beard yep. but uh a bunch of cool guys and uh you know we got to do it live the first time and it was uh we had a good time yeah, so today we're on the podcast, we're going to bring Aston LaFon on. Aston is the founder, CEO, and I'm sure a couple other titles of the, of the product, <laughs> uh, of the product 1821. Um, like, like, you, like, uh, like Tony said earlier, um, we brought them back, we brought them on the podcast in 2018. It was kind of our, it was a good learning experience for us because it was our first like drop in kind of podcast. It was the first podcast that we had ever done that we weren't like, frankly, prepared for. Yeah, yeah, just, just. It, hey you guys have room for for another podcast we're like sure uh you know they brought they came up to the table and uh it was just a good time it was a good time and also what's really cool about it was and as i use it as a learning experience is like that's kind of been a thing now like like when we go to hair shows and stuff um, we book up a lot but if we have some free time or something and uh we can fit another podcast and we we certainly do and uh you know i think the first time that we did it one it was our first it was our very first like live event ever so i think that the nerves were a little bit like crazy that that weekend and um and uh and even having the drop in uh, like not being pre- not feeling prepared i guess um you know and just not going i mean i, I not- think the drop ins are kind of one of my favorites now because you know the excitement you. you don't know where it's going to go it's 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 just great conversation. Well, well, if you listen to the Smart List podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to, other than the Hair Industry podcast, but if you listen to the Smart List podcast, it's it's three friends, and the premise is, is that on every episode, one of the friends brings in a surprise guest. So the other two kind of have to flail to uh to kind of figure it out. I mean, luckily, like most of the guests are like A list and stuff, so you know you know a little bit about them. But right. um, but you know you know what I'm saying. Anyways, yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. I, I kind of like the drop ins, and I kind of like and. You know, it's always like it's a place to make like uh, 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 good friendships or different friendships or new. I'm sorry, new friendships. Yeah, totally. And, and I mean, we get the A list of the uh, of the get, hair industry. We do. We certainly do. You know what I mean? So exactly. All right. So, uh, so let, well, let's bring Mr. Aston in. Uh, Mr. Aston Lafon, welcome back to your day, hey, fellas. What's up, buddy? So, Aston, I, I'm like. I'm like blown away by like where your company is because just a couple of years ago, I was watching a movie, I think it was called otherhood or something. And like 1821 was like legitimately like a character in the, in the movie. Yeah, we were, that was a pretty funny thing. Um, and by the way, Hey fellas, and going back to when we met at yeah. premier Orlando in Florida, I would have never had any idea that was your first live performance. I thought y'all were like old, like veterans. You were pros. I mean, that was smooth like butter. You know what I mean? That was, that was nice. Well, well, you got one part, right? We're old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> old <bro>. uh, <laughs> I, I'm right there with you, Phil. I, f- I feel the gray just coming in while we're talking, <laughs> you know, uh, no, that was a funny thing actually. And, and thanks. Um, you said some kind things opening up. So thank you. Um, but yeah, that was a fun thing. Somebody had reached out to us just from the film business and they were like, Hey, we're, we've got this script and it's called otherhood. It's like motherhood, but without the M we're like, okay. Um, and they're like in the movie, there's this character who's like an ad man. And he's going to be like launching this brand. And we want to make up a brand. We'd rather have it be a real brand, but not one that everybody's kind of heard of. And we were just kind of getting started, right? So we were very like speakeasy back then. And um, and yeah, so they made the brand a character in the movie. And the guy launched our brand in the movie. There was like, we sent in a bunch of products and t-shirts. And they had this magazine in there, which was like a sports magazine called All Balls. We had like a two-page ad in it. And Angela Bassett was like flipping through and stopped on the magazine. It was uh, it was just a fun, cool thing, but um, yeah, that was actually better than our real launch. 
It was it was good. <laughs> a mean, real launch was in a two car garage in Texas, so it was a different it was a different thing. <laughs> that's crazy that they just reached out because I thought it was like this big like PR move or this like big like you know like like you guys had kind of like paid to be there or whatever. Um, you know, like did a lot of work to be there, but but that, that's kind of cool that it was just more organic than that. Most of our if you know of 1821, you probably mostly know about it because of some sort of organic thing, right? You know, we've not been a brand who's like spends a bunch of money on growing brand awareness and top of funnel activity or, you know, we do a few little things here and there, but but it's mostly been organic, you know? And when, when uh, we met you guys in Premiere, you guys pretty much just launched the uh, the product line, right? I think that was what 2018 so yeah we had been in business uh, maybe three-ish years by then so we started with like four products in like may of 2014 um i don't know how many we had then but now we're up to about 40 which is kind of like a little crazy <laughs> but yeah we i think back then we had just a handful of really great distributors in north america and so we were in one country with maybe less than 10 products and now we're in like over 30 countries with 40 products yeah we've, we've grown a lot since then it's such to me uh, and i kind of want to get off all the brand stuff here real quick but but the brand is so cool to me because it's like it like says to me it's like americana Right. Like, like I use the beard oil and the beard oil looks like an old oil can, you know, and, and, and the, and the pomades look like they're just like these like cool, they just look really cool displayed together. Like the cool glass, um, the glass products, um, with them. Um, it's just, it's just a very like aesthetically cool product. Also, thank you. Love the, love the fragrance. And, and, and I literally like the 1821 is what I use in my beard. You know, I use both the oil and, and the, uh, and the balm there. Um, and I, uh, I, I just, it's just such a great product. I, I can't, it, it's weird to keep talking about, you know, the product, but, but it's, it just is. I, and I use it, you know, um, I love the, for, for all you beard heathers, brother, brethren out there, um, the, uh, about I love to say heathens. heathens. Uh, yeah. heathens. We're yeah. all this. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. We're, we're heathens. Um, but the, um, I love the oil because it's a little like, it's almost like, I don't want to say sticky, but it has a little bit of weight to it. Like it's vis viscosity. There it is. The 1821. Uh, there it is. It's it's like a thick viscosity. Viscosity. So I like. I kind of like that in the beard, and it kind of like it molds the beard really well too. Anyways, uh, uh, that's all crazy. No, I just love the product line, dude. Again, it it, it screams Americana to me, which I absolutely uh, love as well. Like look with all the products, and like I like the uh, the hairspray bottle. Just I just want to have the hairspray bottle displayed because it looks so cool. I still have it. Do you really? Yeah. Oh man, I love it. Looks like uh, it looks like an old beer can. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's that's really high praise, guys. We appreciate that. I mean, that's that's why we do this. You know, we we ultimately just hope that um, and we feel like we exist to kind of empower barbers and stylists and men alike. And just the way that we happen to do that is through you know grooming products and also lifestyle wisdom and things like that. But we really feel like I mean, we exist for people to love the products and help them feel like self-assured and more confident and and all those things and um and yeah i mean we're we're having a we're having a good time you know we just try to do everything a bit different than everybody else there's a lot of great products out there so we just kind of do what we do and it's funny like we hear all this feedback kind of you know similar to what you're saying with products but we've been in business almost 10 years and it seems like we've been in business 100 years it's just we we kind of get this it, it kind of spreads like wildfire throughout the family in this funny way, you know, where, oh, my my son bought this for me. And so now my son and I are using it. And I gave it to my brother. So now the uncle's using it. And, oh, you know, grandpops loves it too. And it just kind of, we hear all these stories. And it's like, we haven't even been around that long, but it, but, but it, uh, yeah, people get really passionate about it. So, you know, we I, I, I kind of, I, I want to, I guess CEO me here a little bit, like, like every single one of your, and we talked about it, what every single one of your bottles, every single one of your products is completely different than, than, than other stuff that's on the market. Like I know like of a, of a, of a pomade company and i'm talking about like a, 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 a an umbrella company where there's there's a bunch of like men's beard bombs and stuff that are on the product and they're all in the exact same packaging they're just like labeled yeah. a little bit differently and like all your products even the packaging is completely different like as a as a ceo like how does that come about and and how yeah. does and and how is it has to be important to the brand to look completely different on the shelves and like yeah again let's I, I don't know where we're going let's dive into that though 
<laughs> I uh, okay. I'm just gonna say I'm the president, not only because Tom is the CEO, and Tom will be like, "What's happened?" Is Aston trying to take over? <laughs> um, we're done. No, I, I love the with, takeover. The president we got an awesome team, Sorry. and nobody's trying to take over. Um, yeah, I mean, we you know we so we come from Pro Beauty, so we think very highly about obviously the performance of the products, and you know our barbers and stylists gonna think like that's something they want to use and lend their authority to and use on their clients, and we think about obviously like well, it's got to you know, it's got to work great for the clients. So they want to take it home and then use it again. And all that helps like retention and referrals for professionals because the hair looks good at home like it did in the shop. And that's a good thing, you know. Um, but when it comes to like the products themselves, I, I kind of think of it in maybe two camps. You know, there's the trying to come up with the essentials that we know people need. And we still don't kind of have all those things. You know, we're still working on like deodorant, for example, and some other things that somebody might kind of need in their grooming ritual. Um, and then we think about like, well, where are the places where we can really kind of innovate something unique that hasn't existed before? And a lot of times we find that through things that are like multitasking. I'm not not like a 13 in one where it's like shampoo, conditioner, peanut butter or whatever. Just like how many things can we have something do and it do them well? Because we feel like guys appreciate that a lot. And then like, but the three things that really I think stand out from our brand are, you know, the way that it looks, right? That packaging catches a lot of attention. It's really unique. and. <clears throat> everything is inspired by this kind of spirit of prohibition era bootlegging. So, you know, for example, like our, our man-made wash comes in a, a whiskey bottle, right? Um, or, you know, we've got the, the oil can that should remind you of like old Route 66 oil cans or um, even like our pomade jars. They're not pucks, they're glass, with like three layers of paint. And it might remind you of something you'd find in an apothecary back in the day. Um, and it feels nostalgic, but it also feels modern. So, you know, somebody who's younger might think it's cool or somebody who's, you know, got a little more experience might think it's cool. And then it's kind of this mix of fancy and edgy. So, you know, if you get the finer taste, it feels elevated. If you're a little rough around the edges, you know, it, it feels kind of like mysterious and edgy. Um, so packaging definitely plays and we, we think of it in concepts. It all kind of ties together if you look at it all on the shelf. But each one is kind of almost its own unique thing, right? Um, and it's almost always a, a nod to, to something back in the day. And then I think, you know, besides the packaging and the performance, we're most known for the fragrances, right? We have four. The sweet tobacco is the original. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, we're also like very well known for those um, kind of experiences that people get through fragrance, you know, like whether it's something that's great for, you know, makes you feel like you're at the bar kicking back honeybees at the speakeasy or, you know, you're having a cocktail, you know, Oceanside, maybe with the forest nearby, or like, you know, you're in the library sipping a brandy with a bearskin rug, like everything is kind of designed to emulate like an experience and emotion and be just really engaging. Well, take it, take, take me into your marketing meetings, like, like you have this product that's coming out and like, it's not good enough just to be a product, like the product's going to stand on its own as a product. But then like, how do you guys kind of figure out or what, 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 what do your meetings sound like as far as like, okay, we need to put this on really like vintage type packaging or, 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 or it, it kind of walk again, walk me through that. Like, like, and whose idea is it? Like who brings it? Like what comes first, the packaging or the product? It's almost always the product and then the packaging. Um, but, you know, kind of going back to the like very early days, sometimes it was like very simple observations, you know, so like going back to the beginning, almost 10 years ago, when I was looking at shampoo bottles, right, it was like everything was black and chrome and peppermint and tea tree and the pomades always came in a little hockey puck and, you know, um, everything felt kind of similar. Um, which to me felt a little mundane, you know, and everything for the most part said for men on it, which, you know, for me, that should be like instinctively obvious, you know, mm. so started to have these observations, like, you know, if, if, if it's a plastic puck, it should be glass, you know, if it's got a sticker, it should be painted, right, if it's a, uh, uh, if it's in a black and chrome bottle, well, what's maybe more masculine than that? How about whiskey or beer or bourbon? You know, like, um, and then, you know, if everything's peppermint and tea tree, like that has a function to it, right? I mean, those products are great for people that have oily or acne prone skin. Um, but, you know, it's like, well, it doesn't have to be that. What what else can we do? How can we make it more of like, emulate like a masculine experience? You know, you start thinking about the experience and you come up with a fragrance. With it. So it's a couple of things. One, sometimes it, it comes up like, hey, I got a, packaging idea a product like what could we put in that 
And it, but most of the time it starts with like, hey, what's a product that our customers need or something we've been wanting to do that we haven't done? Like, where's a white space, right? Um, or is there something even our competitors are doing that we feel like we can maybe, you know, elevate that a bit or do it in our own unique way to where our customers would love that? Um, and then sometimes it's just like, um, it comes out of nowhere. Like, like we have no idea where that idea came from. Like, sometimes we have ideas and like, I don't know who thought of that. Uh, we don't really spend a lot of time with that. Um, but yeah, it's it's typically like we have a process once we come up with something. Um, but, you know, and right now we've got products out for like two years that we're thinking about. So we got a bunch of stuff in the pipeline. Oh, wow. That's cool. Now, so, you know, and you, like 1821, you said prohibition. Do you like if you come up, do you kind of look at that whole era and, and kind of see all the different designs and graphics, kind of what was going on and the that kind of it feeds and inspires maybe the the look yeah sometimes like for sure um and and it's always kind of like it's a great inspiration you know that that kind of art deco movement you know those designs through new deco today still look you know beautiful and relevant and strong and um i mean a lot of the if you if you've been in manhattan lately and, you, lately and you've been down billionaires row i mean all those new gazillion dollar buildings there most of them are like art deco right um so it's one of those things where it, it just seems a little timeless you know that that period that kind of artwork um and so we we definitely are inspired by that for sure um but we don't kind of directly just lift things from it you know we try to say hey that's that's a design we love you know how can we kind of take something like that and twist it up and make it our own and, and does that make sense for like our brand, our customers, that kind of stuff. So, how do you how do you, how do you justify? And and I'm going to speak for you here, so you're also allowed to correct me. But like, <laughs> it has to be like 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 the example that I made before about the bombs being in all the the same packaging. Like, it has to be way more expensive for you guys to produce your packaging than it would like like your like like your you know yeah. like like a regular brand that that's like mass producing or there's a mother there's a mother company that's mass producing all these different brands in there like how yeah. do you how do you account for that or is that part of the conversation or oh yeah definitely because you know sometimes you can want to build something so good that it kind of prices itself out you know where nobody would really i mean maybe somebody gets that at their hand but you know that would be an obstacle for them to want to take it home so um, you know, we also, so when we're thinking about like a product, the concept, we first kind of start with the formula because we feel like that's the most important and we really spend our time to, um, think about what we want that formula to accomplish. And then we do a lot of testing with it. it usually takes us about two years to go through, through a formula from start to finish. Um, and then kind of near the end phases is really when we take those packaging concepts that we had and try to figure out which one is the best, you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so like, for example, our products, um, they're not inexpensive, you know, like for, for the most part, I think um, like our pomades are like 25 and some change or like our, our wash is like $29 on the retail side. Um, but we really try to not focus on, you know, what that too much on what that cost is in the end. We just really try to focus on people thinking like, yeah, that's a good value, you know? So meaning like when they see the product, they're like, yeah, that, that price feels appropriate for that. When they use the product, they're like, yeah, I'm getting exactly what I want out of that. It's high performance or it meets all their like expectations. And then, um, but, but there's a lot of, um, uh, <laughs> if you, if you go, the best way for me to explain it is like, you can go get like a really premium beer, right? Like ice cold premium beer and somebody serves it to you in like a plastic stein and you pick up that plastic stein and it's too light and you're like, oh, instantly you kind of get this impression like, oh man, this beer might not be so great. You know, right. the stein ruined the beer. Um, but you can get like a cold, ice cold PBR in like a two pound glass stein and it might be the best beer you've ever had. Um, so, you know, it all plays together to give this feeling of kind of substantial like to make the product feel substantial like an apple watch versus a rolex you feel your rolex all day and you forget about your apple watch you know it's heavy it's weighted it's premium materials it's there it's like oh man you might even like eventually get one arm that's stronger than the other <laughs> you know but but it's like so so we play with that so you know like our our pomades our paste these are in like really thick glass jars there's three layers of paint on there um we spend the most on the product on the fill um 
but yeah, it's it, if we're going to back down anywhere, we do back down in the materials of the packaging. We won't back down on the fill. And kind of coming out of COVID, you know, things have gotten way more expensive. And we produce everything here in the States, right? So, um, which is even more expensive than trying to produce something globally, you know? So, so we never compromise in the, in the, the best way to say is we never compromise on the quality of the product inside the jar. If we're going to do anything, we might back down on, on the vessel itself, maybe use a different material or something lighter or less expensive. So that way our customer can get that great performance and not just a pretty jar, if that makes sense. All right. Back to the pretty jar. Cause I'm fascinated by your pretty jars. Do you have, do you, so do you have, um, do you work with one packaging company? Um, or do no. you, you work with multiple? So, cause I was thinking like, how cool would it be when 1821 calls? Listen, we want something totally unique. Cause you know, like, I'm sure if you work at a packaging company, it's like, it's all the same every day, you know, but then you get these, these specialty brands that come in and go like, all right, I'm thinking like an oil can from like the 1940s. And you're like, Oh, I'm all yeah. you you must fire up those uh those whatever they was are the 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 graphic design artist or whatever. The the first time, yeah, it, there's typically this kind of confused face followed by like nobody's ever done that, followed by like are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> and then we're like, yeah, we want to do that. Um I remember like the first time we came up with with this one with the the whiskey bottle. And uh, we were talking to, we work with about five or six different laboratories, I think today uh, throughout the US and and those laboratories purchase from different packaging companies and things like that. And But, you know, we create a brief and we work with designers and we work with the laboratory to get kind of what we think our customers will want, right? Um, and something that we want to use, something we're excited about. Um, but I remember when we came up with this one and we went to the lab and they were like, what, why would you want to do that? Why? What? Why, why not just use the the black bottle? That's what that's what guys brands are. We we can put chrome hot lettering on it. You can make it black and orange or black and yellow or black and green or black and blue. We're like, but we don't want that. That's what everybody does. And they were like, guys, this fragrance. Oh man, you've developed this sweet tobacco, and there's like forty components in there. Why don't you scale that back and just do the just do the peppermint, just do the tea tree. It's so much cheaper. You'll make so much more money. We're like. No, we want to make something like different, something good, like not the same thing. Like, and it was a struggle. And that was kind of honestly where we came up with the name of the brand, 1821, was because we felt like we were kind of going against the grain. Like we felt a little bit underground, like we were down in the basement with our own little distillery kind of making the booze, but upstairs it was illegal. You know, so it it felt like prohibition. And that's where that kind of idea for the prohibition came in, uh, in the namesake 1821, because it's the 18th Amendment and the 21st Amendment that book into prohibition. But these laboratories yeah. telling us that's crazy and telling us no, we were like, well, there's something to that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I even today, 1821 was a year. And I couldn't, no. I couldn't figure it. So I couldn't, for years, since, since we met way back in our 2018, since... Since then, I thought it was a year, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out like, because prohibition was in nineteen nineteen to nineteen twenty nine. I couldn't figure out like where the prohibition was with the eighteen twenty one, dude. Yeah. You, oh. If you look at our our logo here, I'll try to make this close. Oh, it says yes. a, a noble a noble experiment. That's commonly what um, prohibition was referred to as a noble experiment. Obviously, it was a failed experiment, but you know it, we can relate to that. You know, it's it's we felt like there was this prohibition placed on men's grooming. Like they all had to be the same way. Uh, and we just didn't feel like subscribing to that. So we were like, Oh, we'll just do our own thing. <laughs> okay. I, I got to take you back because I'm really interested in where you were 10 years ago as a startup. Um, like when yeah. you, because, because you've got like these grandiose ideas as far as what the product's going to be, what the packaging should be. And, and, and so who were like, like, who was sitting in the room with you, asking? Yeah, like, like, like from day one, like before yeah. anybody was interested, before there was any money to be made. Yeah. So, um, well, funnily enough, so um, myself and the original founders, two two of which are no longer in the day to day of the business, um, Angel Del Solar and David Del Solar. Um, I'm still in the business. Um, we owned a distributor. Where in Texas, where we were distributing other brands, like really good brands, like um, you know Verb, this brand called Reverie. Uh, we were looking at Evo and a couple other things. We would have kept expanding the distributor business because we had like a ton of just great salon customers, like 
couple hundred of like the best of the best salons in Texas. You know, they all had like premium brands like, you know, Orbe and Kerastas and all those kind of premium things. They were just beautiful shops, great owners, great team, like awesome. Um, and what we realized though, was like a lot of the times these salons had like fellas coming in there and they would use a lot of the time the women's products on them. And a lot of the times like the hair would look okay, but the guys didn't buy in and you know, they want to take it home with them. And sometimes if the salon did have guys products, they were like hidden under the counter or back on the bottom shelf because it wasn't like premium enough to display with their other premium brands. I mean, so they, we were, were like, they were black and chrome after all. Ex exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, too much tea tree. Um, but, you know, like um, and at the time we were we were working on a women's brand. Right. We were going to make our own little brand. We had some ideas and Angel and I were working on a women's brand. Um, and then my wife came home one day because I was just kind of frustrated a little bit. I was like, you know, these products don't really turn out how we want them. And I don't know. I just I'm not feeling it. And my wife was like, you're a bunch of dudes. You should make dude stuff. I was like, make dude stuff. I was like, this is a good idea. Um, so so then I started really looking at the, the guy's business and noticing those things I just mentioned, you know, um, and realizing like, OK, well, let's find a brand that we can just you know, distribute. We weren't even thinking about creating a men's brand. It was like, let's find something we can distribute that our customers, salon customers will love. And everything we found was kind of similar, you know, like all the same price points, similar characteristics, or it was something that had kind of over time landed in mass or something like that, you know. Um, and so, you know, kind of driving to our territories within Texas, I'm going to just started coming up with a bunch of ideas, you know, it's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if it was in this? Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if it smelled like that? We're having tacos and there's a tobacco shop next door. Like, hey, let's go check that out. And then you're going like, our product should smell like this. And so um, just all those little kind of ideas and conversations with, you know, my wife or Angel or David or, you know, even our salon customers, right? Um, shop owners and things like that. It all kind of led to the original idea, really. We were just very open-minded to... Um, a, a good idea can come from anywhere and they still do. So um, all these, all these years later, it feels pretty similar um, in the sense of how we like create new things, you know, just try to always look for something um, th that we think the customers will enjoy, but you know, now it's different because we have such a wide base of customers on the salon side and the distribution side or directly. Um, and we have this kind of brand ethos now that we kind of understand better. You know, like like in the beginning, it was just kind of you put a bunch of ideas together and you kind of hope it looks like a brand. Right. <laughs> and then over time, it starts to maybe not look like a brand and then you maybe realize it and then you come back to like, OK, I get our brand. now. You know, <laughs> so I think today we like we fully get it. There's always something to learn um, as we as we grow. But um, yeah, I think we get our brand and we're kind of delivering to it. I'm glad you kind of brought that up because I think so many times you get like, you get lost, you get lost in the minutia of the day and you kind of forget what that, what that overall brand funnel is or what that overall brand brand is. Right. Like I certainly know yeah. times where I've gone, oh, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing and who are we serving? Right. What are we doing? Yeah. Who are we yeah. serving? And, and that's always like the, the slap in the face to be like, okay, let's get back to like what our, what our value is as a brand and, 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 and what, and what we can offer or how we can, how, how we, how we can be of service. And you guys have been on point too, because uh, the last 10 years, the whole men's barbering uh, side of the industry has, I mean, exploded. Yeah. 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 I really think is a brand. I, I know for certain that our products change the way that other products look. Right. Um, I can see that in in other brands. Um, I think probably the the people that were the most influential are the two guys from Ruzel, right? Yeah. Um, and and I love those guys. Shout I mean, out to Robin guys. Lane. Yeah, we love those guys. Yeah, those guys are great. And um, you know, I um, definitely you know as a brand owner, we were watching their barbering video. You know, like back in the day, and going, "This is yeah. cool. This is kind of like." I feel like it has kind of a similar vibe to what we were thinking and already doing in some of the products, but they were doing it kind of on the hair side. And obviously they came out with their brand and their brand's great too. Um, but yeah, it definitely seems like too, like there was this flood from people to start kind of copying things, um, you know, copying, there's 
people been copying crew for years, right? Um, but, you know, like, uh, yeah, just kind of copying the things that were kind of emerging or starting to catch a little fire. Um, and I think you're seeing some of those things have kind of dropped off or, or disappeared, you know. Um, you know, we've always seen 1821 as like a hundred year brand. You know, it's it's something that, um, you know, we hope we hope there's, you know, a young a young fellow buying stuff now and, you know, eventually he's introducing it to his grandson or something, you know. Um, and so, like, uh, you know, we've never been in any rush to grow. Um, you know, we've just kind of grown mostly organically, you know, gaining new customers as they as they become interested. And, and then when we get those new customers, just trying to do our best to, like, kind of nourish them. Um, and that's worked out pretty good for us, you know, so we're still, I mean, we're a pretty sizable brand, you know, we've got a good reach and a good assortment and a lot of customers, like great customers. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's a lot of growth behind us, but still a lot of growth ahead of us, you know, so that's, um, it's one of those things where, um, you know, just kind of continue, I think, to keep seeing us, you know, going and growing. I, I, I listen again, I, lo I love the brand and, you know, I recommend anyone that's listening in, like if you're looking for a, a men's grooming brand, like to take a look at 1820 and literally take a look at it because the packaging is absolutely beautiful. Um, And, and I, I'm glad you said earlier on too, like, it shouldn't say men's grooming. It should just look like men's grooming, you know, right. like, and when you said that, like, once again, I had another aha go, that's exactly what the brand brings, you know, like, it's like, oh yeah, this is like, this is like, you know, masculine stuff, you know, um, it, it, anyways, I, again, I, I love the brand. Hey, uh, so, um, you an F1 fan? I am, uh, a massive F1 fan. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a few posters behind me and then my whole office is motorsport. I go race at the track a few times a year here. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I love motorsport. And you're in Austin, right? I'm in Austin. Yeah. So there's a, yeah. there's an F1, there's an F1 race there, isn't there? So yeah, October is a big month for Austin because we've got uh, ACL, which is a, a double weekend music festival, kind of like a Lollapalooza, but over two weekends. And then um, we've got F1 uh, late October. I got my wife's birthday, 20 year anniversary this year. Like we got a bunch of stuff going on for October, but uh, but yeah, so we have uh, Circuit of the Americas, what we call it CODA, uh, but we've got CODA here. And, um, and yeah, that's a big weekend, race weekend. Like I think now it's crazy because that the netflix show has really brought a lot of eyes to formula one, one. So, yeah there you go man and so uh i mean i've been watching it since i was a kid and then kind of stopped and then started watching it again maybe i don't know 15 years ago pretty regularly like every race but um but yeah so like it there was a point where two hundred thousand people would come in for an f1 weekend now it's like half a million and there's like there's just no space around the track. So we go for, we'll go this year. We'll just go for qualifying and then we'll watch the race at home. Yeah. That's so that's awesome. We love Austin too. I mean, we've been there quite a few times the last couple of years. Next time we're going to reach out to you and maybe we go grab some dinner or some hang out or something. Oh man. I'd love that guys. I, I know where all the, all the beer is, all the tacos, uh, all, all the barbecue. We got, we got it covered. <laughs> just come on down. <laughs> Well, we, we definitely want to go to Lauro too, because uh, uh, Lauro is 1000% our favorite little hop whenever we're in Austin. Like we've, we've, really? been, oh my gosh, I love Lauro. Yeah. Look at you guys knowing Lauro. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Have you eaten there, Austin? <laughs> What's that? Have you eaten there? Just once. Yeah. Yeah. Just Laura? once. Dude, we Good love Lauro. So Laura's Tony, one of Tony's clients moved, I think this is the story, right? One of his yeah. clients moved there and they're kind of a foodie and they were like, and our, our first time down there a couple of years ago, um, they gave us a list of like, you got you have to go here and you have to go there. And one of the spots was Lauro. And to be honest, because it's not right downtown, like, you know, we had to take an Uber out or something like that. And we're like, oh, yeah. this is kind of inconvenient, but now like it's not enough of an inconvenience because it is so, so good. Uh, there's something new to eat every weekend that pops up, you know? Um, yeah, we've got, we've got no shortage of good food here. That's for sure. That's uh, true. What's that taco place we eat at on South Congress? Yeah. Right on at the bridge, uh, Veracruz or Veracruz. Yeah. Veracruz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talk about Austin food all weekend, man. Right. Veracruz, yeah. all national tacos, but yeah, we, and they're growing too. So we keep seeing like more and more Veracruz around it. It's good. Terry stuff. Blacks. Yeah, Terry Blacks is good. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Terry Blacks. We went there's to, a place on the east side called La Barbecue, which is really, really good. Kind of like Terry Black's, but I think Terry Black's has kind of become more like, if you're not a local, 
everybody knows Terry Black's. So they come and they go to Terry Black's, but if you're local, maybe you go to the barbecue. They're both amazing. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense, right? Like the tourists go to Terry Black's and the, the barbecue is like where, you know, you'll find Austin and stuff. And we also went to, I was blown away to um, a couple, uh, when we were there, it was a, it was last September when we were there. We went to a bar called a speak called Speakeasy. Speakeasy, yeah. Speakeasy, yeah. And it was like a Wednesday night, and the place had a thousand people in there. I was like, this is <laughs> crazy. It was like a Saturday night and and a Wednesday night in Austin. Yeah, most Austin. I do love Austin, man. We it, it's um, and it feels pretty busy most of the time. Right. Um, yeah, we, the Speakeasy is a good spot. Um, if you like Speakeasy, there's a couple other places like Dumont's Down Low or Boss's Office or, uh, you know, um, what's that other one? Here now, uh, here or there, here or there is good. Like, oh man, this, come on down. We'll go do all the drinks. Yeah, we're going to do we'll it. Have all the, we'll have all the food. <laughs> yeah, because we, we also did a comedy club. Oh, yeah, 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 we did. Oh, did you go to the mothership, Joe Rogan's place, or no? No, this is before Rogan right. opened, but it was um, it was down the street from there, uh, the Vulcan. Oh, I've never been to that. No, yeah, yeah, we went to that. the Vulcan, and um, we, we saw a good show there, and then I guess Rogan just opened up the... How has that changed, Austin, or has it? Like, it's become like the comedy mother... Well, literally, the, the mothership. I haven't been there yet, um, but I've been following it, and it seems like you know, he's, he's got this regular, just like cycle of like awesome talent going through there. It's two rooms, I guess. And then surprise, like all of a sudden Chappelle's there or somebody like, you know, um, so, so like, yeah, but we haven't been there. We, we need to get there. Um, I just haven't, haven't done it yet, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of right located on dirty six, which is like a lot of the locals don't go to dirty six. That's kind of the very touristy, like, if you've heard about an Austin shooting, it probably happened there. <laughs> but so a lot of the locals started to laugh at that. That's not funny. But a lot of the a lot of the locals kind of stay away from that. It just gets a little gnarly there. Um, but yeah, no, we we saw it actually during South by Southwest, and we're like, oh, I think that's that Joe Rogan spot. So we'll we'll get there. But it, I mean, we were walking all over there. Uh, I know. I didn't realize there were shootings there. Yeah, yeah. It's I uh, it's, there were zombies. It's, yeah, it yeah, like Sixth Street, Red River, Seventh Street, like yeah, it's it's a little sketchy over there sometimes. But oh yeah, we had we 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 ate at this restaurant and it's like it it faced this park, and we're outside eating, and uh, all of a sudden we look over, and it, this guy just started stripping butt naked in the and, restaurant. It's my town. Yeah. And, the, and the cop comes <laughs> and the cop pulls up and he's like, oh sorry sorry and he gets dressed and the cop leaves and he gets undressed again <laughs> it's like yeah well just you know uh, two, two shows a night you know right yeah <laughs> <laughs> we got two shows in like 20 minutes <laughs> yeah, two shows a night guys well yeah hey if you come down you know we, we can find that guy if you're if you're down or i don't know we'll have a good time, <laughs> we'll have a good time. That, that's okay we saw more than we needed to yeah <laughs> I, I believe it yeah, I feel a little trauma on the Tony side. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, because it, it was funny because it, it would have been all right if he stayed at the park, but he had to run up onto our <laughs> to the deck. Yeah, where <laughs> where we where everybody was eating, and then era, it was it was crazy. It yeah, was funny. Oh, man. It and, happens. We're keeping it weird. That's yeah, that's yeah. Well, for sure. We're yeah. keeping it weird. We it was um, fun. It, we had a good time. It was a good time. It was, cool. it was like whatever. It was. It was actually funny how like nonchalant everyone was about it. You know, like if if this was here, it would have been like you know they would have shut the roads down and everything. But there, it was just like oh well, keeping it weird. Keeping yeah, it weird. And, and we uh and we uh scooter everywhere. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. You that's can be fun. pretty. You can be pretty late on the brakes on the scooter. It's uh, those are dangerous. <laughs> We've seen a. I did see a guy who was, you know, it's it's a bit hilly here, um, and versus everywhere else in Texas, which is kind of flat. And there, was, I saw a pretty big guy on one of those scooters. Um, and that was Tony. He, he, he had no brakes, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, and he just ran right out into busy traffic. And I just watched him thread the needle, and I was like, oh, dude, no. that was so close. But uh, yeah, sometimes it gets. Uh, the scooter traffic you just got to really pay attention here if you're driving around you know just like people well, buzz you took them four wheeling down to to uh check out the uh the bats, the bats yeah. yeah yeah the bats is a thing that's pretty cool right it was it was definitely pretty cool i was a little like i don't want to say disappointed but i was 
surprised. Like I thought like, cause there's like 2 million bats under Congress bridge for those listening in. And like, um, and I thought like they would all leave at one time. So it would be like this blackening of the sky, but it was like, it was like 45 minutes of like consistent, like leaving. It was like, it was like, wow. Next time we'll drive yeah. with uh with an 1821 bottle in our back pocket or in a brown paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. The well, the when when we first moved to Austin, I didn't know about Bat Bridge, and uh, we were just kind of riding our bikes on the city trail, which is a, a, like on Lady Bird Lake, which is like a, a a lake or river that runs through the downtown, and the bridges that run over that are where the bats. For the listeners, that's where the bats kind of fly out, and they come out and like it takes them an hour, and it's like I don't know how many bats. It's insane. Um, but yeah, we just kind of oh, yeah. drove up on our bikes and we're like, hey, what's going on? Because there's like massive crowds of people and somebody was like, oh, a bunch of bats are going to fly out. We were like, okay, cool. Didn't know what to expect. And yeah, like 45 minutes worth of bats flew out from the, these bridges and we were like, I mean, it's the most I've ever felt like Batman, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was, it was pretty impressive. You know, I don't know why they picked there, but apparently they like, they fly out into the, like the country and eat some insects and then they come back to the city. So. Yeah. Well, uh, they can, they can eat what, like double their body weight a night and, min and mosquitoes and stuff. So, you know, be thankful that because yeah. if not, they're on you. They're yeah. If, yeah. if not, the mosquitoes are eating you. <laughs> right. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So what, um, oh, by the way, I'll, I'll throw our hats in the ring. If you, uh, if you ever need like some testers when you guys are in late, 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 late development, you know, <laughs> like Tony and I, we, we would love to test some products, you know? I would love that. We've got a bunch of good stuff coming up. We've got, um, we've got an anti-flake wash, which we're pretty excited about, you know, like uh, a lot of fellas have the head and shoulders of commercials have really kind of created this like fuzziness for what people understand as being dandruff like you know you can have you know flakes and that can be obviously i mean we we know but you know <laughs> a lot of people think you know hair grows out of the ends they don't get that it's from your scalp but you know it's like uh but you know flakes can be dry skin it can be dry oil it can be you know dry wax in your hair like and then or it can actually be like you know smelly gummy fungus dandruff right and so um we've created this wash it it comes in a bottle kind of like this but it's like this beautiful like gloss black with like red and gold and smells like sweet tobacco but you know if, if somebody comes over and you've got head and shoulders in the shower I don't know if that feels sexy or not. Maybe not. Um, you know, maybe you're a little embarrassed to buy that or have that in the shower. You know, so like uh, it's a product that works, which is great. Right. Um, but uh, we just kind of wanted to make dandruff sexy again. So you know, we're we're coming in and doing our take on it, where um, you know, just smells really great, looks cool, and works really okay. well. So we're excited about that one. A lot of guys struggle with that, and you know, we haven't had a product like that. So well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So in your team, who comes up with like the ideas, the plans, the whatever, or, or how does, how does that kind of work out uh, organizationally? Yeah, I, I definitely lead all that. Um, but I don't come up with all the ideas and for some of the good ideas that I have of probably equally, or maybe even more had bad ideas, you know, so <laughs> it's just trying to filter out which ones you think are the winners. Um, but no, our, our team is, um, uh, it's a small group of people and, um, I, there's definitely, I think less than 10 of us or something. And then we use a lot of agencies for creative things and, and, and stuff outside of 1821, but internally we're a small little team. So, you know, we're pretty scrappy and, and nimble and we all work really well together. So like, like I said earlier, a good idea can come from anywhere. Um, you know, like, um, it might come from, from B, our brand manager or, um, or I mentioned Tom earlier, um, our CEO, or you know Kim, Kim who manages um, our new product development, or other other channels that we serve. So like it can come from anywhere, and sometimes our customers will like reach out and say something like, "Hey, I'm looking for a skincare product that you know, um, you know, my skin has looked tired since like 2010 or something like that." And we're like, "Oh, okay. Well, maybe we should make a an anti aging face lotion." So, you know, it, it's just like a good idea can come from anywhere. So it's, it's not, I do definitely am the catch all and kind of manage the process with my team. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really all of us contributing. Do you have a deodorant? So we do have a deodorant that we're working on. Actually, I've got, I've got it sitting in front of me. This is just like stock packaging. It's like a formula that we're 
that we now love and smells really good and works really good. Um, we spend a lot of time testing things, you know, just make sure they, they work. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we've got a deodorant coming out that's, um, it's not an antiperspirant, you know, it's uh, more kind of health minded, um, smells really good, water soluble, um, no baking soda, aluminum, that kind of stuff. So very health, very healthy, um, but it works and it smells, smells good. And so we'll have that. It's probably looking like the back half of 2024, but yeah, we're working on it. What, uh, what, what will the packaging look like? So it'll probably be something kind of similar to, to this, you know, where it's like this kind of vessel. Um, but I'm really liking this, uh, going into all the secrets here. Um, I really like this kind of satin metallic finish. Yeah. Um, and then we have these, these products called um, spirit spritzers, which are like, a, it's a body spray. Um, and if you take the cap off, it, it looks like a canned cocktail. That was the idea, you know, because we have this parfum grade product called Spirits that's kind of meant to look like a cocktail shaker. Um, we got an idea for that too. So um, so I think these will kind of look similar, you know, in the end, so they right. kind of tie together the body spray and the deodorant, but um, we're still working on it. We we haven't really come up with the designs yet. We're just narrowing all that down now. You know, we, like I said earlier, we mostly start with the product first, making sure we got something like good. And then we think about how we're going to package it. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, and and do you guys uh, work with distributors? Do you uh, you because I, I think back in in two thousand eighteen, uh, it was through you guys directly, wasn't it? Or or you had very we, limited. We probably had uh, a couple of distributors in the mix at that time. Um, we definitely have a lot more now. Um, so, like for example, our nationwide distributor is Salon Centric. So you know if you're if you're listening and you're trying to find somewhere close by there's most likely a salon centric store near you and you can find 1821 products. Some stores have more than less, but they have most of our, most of our products on shelf. Um, and then, um, and then, so like, and then kind of like um, we have more like sometimes boutique distributors. Some of them are really large, like a salon service group, which is maybe across, you know, almost 20 States or like a life of Riley, which has many States or, NYC Empire. So, you know, we work with uh, a lot of uh, distributors deep south in Louisiana. If you're in Canada, it's ESP. Um, and then we're, like I said, in about 30 different countries now. So, um, and we've got some new distributors here um, that it looks like we're we're going to be opening. We just opened somebody in Ukraine. We've got another one lined up for Germany, Austria. So a lot more, a lot more growing to do, you know. That's amazing. So, okay. Grab Sorry. I'm, I'm going to kind of bring us back a little bit. What, what, what do you, what, you want to talk about tacos? Let's go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sort of. What yeah. how do you, how do you like if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a forget about it? How do you guys like do you pitch the uh distributors or do the distributors find you? Is it a mix of everything? And and if you're pitching the distributors, what does that pitch sound like? Yeah, you know, I've mostly I, I mean I've always led the sales for the brand. And in, and in the early days, you know, doing all the sales for the brand. And then over the years, we've, you know, brought on, uh, we brought on a sales team called the Kirshner Group to help us out. And they've been really great. They have, you know, a sales team all over the world. Uh, I love working with them. Their sales team is fantastic. Um, and so sometimes they might bring in a lead because they've had relationships with these distributors working with them over the years, and they might bring somebody to the table, or maybe we exhibited a show, like we met you at Premier Orlando, you know, we might meet distributors there, or like a Cosmoprop North America, or um, Singapore, or, you know, something like that. Um, the Bologna show in Italy is a big, big show to meet European distributors. Um, and then sometimes we we kind of reach out to people directly. So, I mean, it's really a mix of things. And yeah, I mean, I never really feel like I'm pitching anybody, honestly. Um, you know, I have a, a different approach. You know, I really, and I think that's why we partner so strongly with our distributors, you know, is it's not trying to convince them that, you know, our products have, you know, uh, argan oil, which is better than Buriti oil, which is better than Prakashi oil, which is better than Mungunga oil, which is better than, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of that kind of stuff over and over and over. And we really think about like, okay, what, who, who are their customers? What do their customers struggle with? Um, what does the distributor struggle with? At the end of the day, everybody's trying to make some new revenues for themselves, right? How can we help with that? How can we help? But, you know, we think all the way down to like, how can we elevate the service for the guest in the chair? And so, you know, we find a lot that particularly with salons, you know, where they're, 
they're busy, you know, Thursday through Saturday, and then Monday through Wednesday, they're either closed or it's a little slower. And so, you know, we, we tend to want to partner with distributors who can bring that salon a strategy that's like, hey, you know, you bring in 1821, you've got more women in that environment as customers, a little bit of men. Can you have a man-made Monday, a men's day Wednesday, a top shelf Tuesday where, you know, the ladies are buying the guy's two products, the guy gets a complimentary haircut at a at a men's happy hour and boom, now you're you're growing new revenues on a day where the salon was historically slower and you're moving more retail dollars and um, salons, distributors like Salon Service Group are great for that, you know, or Life of Riley are great for that. Um, but then again, you know, the, the landscape of distribution is odd because you have really strong players that are sometimes in these like very defined areas. So somebody like Salon Centric makes a lot of sense for us because they have like tons of stores, right? Like coast to coast. So a lot of people who are like, they've seen our brand on Insta or, you know, they've, they've heard about it or clients asked about it. Well, then, you know, they can go to Salon Centric nearby and just and grab the stuff that they need. Um, and maybe they're not so worried about a strategy to grow their men's business. They just want a good product to offer their guests. So it's really like a, a mix of things. And when I talk to distributors, I'm mostly trying to, I ask them a lot of questions just about their business, you know, uh, about the the men's landscape and how they fit into it and what they're doing and not doing. And then tend to just give them good solutions for those things that we've seen work over time and then pair that with the product. And almost always it becomes this thing where that makes a lot of sense to them. The education that we provide makes a lot of sense to them. And then the product is such a like unique thing. It's such a strong differentiator over the other products that they're like, okay, yeah, we can talk about that. We can be excited about that. So so it, we mostly talk business stuff and then a little bit of product, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. And and just oh. a big shout out to 1821 as well, which I find very, very convenient is that uh, some of the products are purchased in 3.4 ounces, which is uh, oh, which yeah. is very significant because if you have a carry on bag, like, uh, like we, like, like we travel so much that um, it's really nice to be able to go through a, uh, go through the line with, um with a little bit of a, uh, with a little bit of confidence that you're not going to get your, uh, your shit pulled out all <laughs> during TSA <laughs> checkpoints, you know? Um, and we have had that happen though. Like I have, uh, we have this product in a 3.4 ounce. So it just looks like one of those little hotel mini fridge bottles. Uh, and then we're actually working on what we're calling the nipper, which is like a little one ounce sample just for people to try. And our distributors can just hand those out and the salons can hand out the nipper, cool. just a little taste. Um, but no, I did a, sh I did a, an education. You need, you need to call those little nippers a flight, like a flight of beer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. A, flight, a, flight a little flight box. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. Um, uh, they can come from anywhere. Like I said, Corey. So, uh, so yeah, man. Um, I don't know if I should be offended by that or not. No, 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 don't turn that around on me. Um, so no, there was, um, but like, uh, we did this, I did this educational event to launch this awesome distributor that we have in Canada called ESP. Um, and at the event, we gave all of the, the salon consultants, there's like 30 of them. We gave them all the little 3.4 ounce. And a lot of us were going through the airport at the same time. And, and the Canadian equivalent of TSA was stopping all of us and pulling the bottle out of our bag. Like you can't come through here with booze. Like, no, 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 it's shampoo and conditioner. They're like, that's the guy that made it right there. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> but it's just a fun little moment. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It's so cool. It's uh, they, they still haven't figured out, like, I still challenge with, like, my screw caps, right? Like, you put that in your bag and, like, for whatever reason, they always come unscrewed. But I just put it, <laughs> yeah. just put it in a Ziploc bag and then, you know, whatever. You know, you got to use what you got to use. Aston, yeah. thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hey, if people want to, um, if they want to find you, if they want to find 1821, how do they do that? Yeah, so if you want to go directly to our website, it's just 1821manmade.com. You can find us on uh, Insta or TikTok, just at 1821manmade. And we already called and out- it's 1821, like the actual numbers, not spelled yeah, out. just 182, I don't know why I'm, si I don't sign language, sorry, fellas. Uh, 1821 manmade, just all, all together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I called out a few good distributors too, obviously, so you can find those uh, nearby. And if you're, if you're, if you, if none of those are close to you, just hit us up and we'll help you find somebody. 
That's awesome. And if you have a good uh, product idea, like a flight of a uh, uh, of fragrance or something, you know, uh, hit Aston up immediately. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit uh, Salon Centric tomorrow. There you go. Eighteen twenty. <laughs> there you go. Aston Lafon, thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, thanks for chilling with us, man. It just felt I can't believe that hour just like flew by, you know, like that. It was amazing. Um, thank yeah. you for hanging out with us, and thank you for joining us on Yo or Day Off. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating, and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.